Hi, uh, we are going to talk today about ratios and we talked a little bit about ratios yesterday, but um, just to go over a couple of parts real quick, um, I want to make sure that you understand that a ratio is a comparison of quantities. So you're comparing um, like how many boxes of cereal to how many cans of vegetables you have in your cupboards. You're comparing how many red crayons to blue crayons or red crayons to total crayons. For each time that you're doing a comparison, you have to make sure that you know if you're doing it for each, like in this example, it'd be for each red crayon to blue crayon or red crayon to total crayon. So those are some things that you're going to want to make sure that you watch out for. Um, here was our coin example. Did anybody look through coin jars at home to see if they found um, pennies to quarters or quarters to pennies? quarters to total coins? Nope. Oh. And then um, this over here was the, um, this was about as far as we got yesterday in class where we went through the on your own examples one and two. And again, we had to compare, um, in example one, it was dimes to pennies. So it's a part to a part. In here it was a part to a whole. So um, ratios can compare parts to parts or they can compare parts to wholes. And that's uh, just like I said something that you need to make sure that you look out for. I want to go over example number two and example number three and then the on your owns. Okay so tape diagrams are helpful if you want to draw pictures out. I like drawing pictures. I think they're very helpful making models just like we do in science. It's also helpful to make models in math. So this example right here um, says that the ratio of your monthly allowance to your friend's monthly allowance is five to three. The total monthly allowances are forty dollars. How much is each allowance? So I have my five parts for me and my three parts for my friend eight total parts. So I took my $40, divided it into eight parts. Each part is worth $5. So if this is worth 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, I might take that $5 and multiply it by the five parts and I get $25. My friend's allowance is 15. I know the total allowance is $40. So then I add 15 and 25. 40, I know that I'm right. That's how I can double check my math. And then there's another way that you can use a tape diagram is to find out how many when you have something that's even smaller than those tiny little parts. So here's my giant bulb of garlic. If you've never smelled them, they are delicious and they help keep vampires away so you can't go wrong. Um, you separate 42 bulbs of garlic into two groups, one for planting and one for cooking. You plant three bulbs for every four bulbs that you will use for cooking. Each bulb has about eight cloves. A clove is like this tiny little part that makes up the bulb. Um, so I'm, to help visualize this, I make my tape diagrams. I have my planting and I have my cooking. So planting, it said three bulbs, I have three sections. Cooking, I have four bulbs, I drew four sections. Then I took my 42, I divide it by these seven parts, and I get six bulbs in each part. That's where that six came from. I get six bulbs in each part. So three times six is 18 bulbs that they use for planting. Four times six is 24 bulbs that they use for cooking. 18 and 24 equals 42, so I know that that part's right. And if um, the question is, how many cloves will you plant? So I take my 18 planting bulbs. I have to go back to my story problem. Each bulb has about eight cloves. So 18 times eight is 144 cloves. I'll plant about 144 bulbs or cloves of garlic. And each clove makes a bulb, so delicious is coming in your future. Okay. Now let's do these on your own because those are tricky. They hung me up yesterday in my morning class. I'm not even going to lie. I had to wait until I was off of my meeting 
and then I looked back at the problem and I'm like, oh my gosh, I had my own aha moment. It was wonderful. I love the aha moments. So on your own number three is looking at example number two. So if this allowance ratio was two to three instead of five to three, um, I'm going to draw my tape diagram. So this is page 193 on your own number three. Okay. So here's my, this is me and this is my friend. I have two parts and my friend has three parts of our allowance. Okay. See, two to three. So I take the $40, I divide it by these five sections, and I have $8 left, or $8. Each section is worth $8. $8 here, $8 here, 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 and here. So I have two sections, each is worth $8, 8 times 2 is $16, 8 times 3 is 24 if I add 16 and 24, I get 40. That's how I know that I'm right. So I get $16, my friend gets 24. It's pretty cool. On your own number four is also tricky, but fun. Oh, I love it when these math problems make sense. Oh, okay. So on your own number four, so as an example three, it has a one to two bulb ratio instead of three to four. It asks, will you plant more or fewer cloves than originally planned? Up here, we had originally planned for 144 cloves. I want to know if I change it to one to two, will I be planting more or fewer? Okay, so here's my planting. Here's my cooking. I have one to two, that's three sections, 42 divided by my three sections is 14. Each section is worth 14. Okay. So then I need to find out if from these 14 bulbs, how many cloves am I going to plant? Remember there's eight cloves in a bulb. So 14 times 8. 8 times 4 is 2. Carry the 3. 8 times 1 is 11. 112 cloves. Is that my answer? No. Because the question is, will you plant more or fewer cloves than originally planned? Here I planned 144 cloves. But in this on your own, I only planted 112. So I will plant fewer cloves will be planted. Fewer cloves will be planted. Okay. Now your homework tonight is page 194 and 195. I want you to do... 6 through 20. Complete. 6 through 20. Oops, homework. Page 194. Homework. Page 194. 6 through 20. I want you to do all of them. Okay? And then Wednesday morning I will post a video that goes over all the answers so you make sure that you're right. Let me know if you have questions. Don't be afraid to ask Ms. Decker.